Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. In this video, I'm going to talk about common tropes, character types, and themes that are found in Victorian Gothic novels. This is something I've thought about quite a bit because, well, for one thing, a lot of my favorite pieces of classic literature come under this category of Victorian Gothic novel, um, but I've also tried my own hand at writing one a few years ago, and it was an interesting experiment, a lot more difficult than I thought it would be, but also a lot of fun. So I'm going to share what I learned through that process, what I've observed in books I've read, and I'm just sort of try to summarize what a Victorian Gothic novel consists of. It will probably be helpful to start by listing some Victorian Gothic novels so we get some context. I'm just going to start listing off ones I can think of. If you have any ideas, feel free to drop them in the comments. Uh, first one that comes to mind is Jane Eyre. I think most people are familiar with Jane Eyre. If not, it is a novel by English author Charlotte Bronte. And uh, it's about a young woman who becomes a governess at this house called Thornfield. And she falls in love with the mysterious owner of Thornfield named Mr. Rochester. But it turns out he has a very dark secret and things start to deteriorate in their relationship. Uh, as you can imagine. Uh, another one, of course, is Wuthering Heights by Charlotte Bronte's sister, Emily. Also similar in setting and uh, themes, although um, a little more dramatic than Jane Eyre, um, The Phantom of the Opera. So I just did a video on the musical, but there is also a novel by Gaston LaRue and it's based on actually based on a real opera house and real ghost stories so it's kind of an interesting historical aside um, but the Phantom of the Opera is about a ghostly character who haunts this opera house in Paris and terrorizes the patrons and the managers and uh, a young chorus girl who wants to learn how to sing. And the opera ghost becomes obsessed with her and takes advantage of her naivety. Um, another lesser known gothic Victorian novel would be The Woman in White by Wilkie Collins. Similar themes to Jane Eyre. I mean, there's the theme of insanity and the poor treatment of people with insanity back in the Victorian days. Um, but there's also a really great, strong heroine in the character of Marion Halcombe in this book. And it's kind of unusual for a Victorian novel, so I just want to give a shout out to that one. Another famous one, of course, is Great Expectations by Charles Dickens. Highly gothic about a young boy who is told he has an inheritance. He's not really sure who the inheritance is from. He thinks it's from this mysterious Miss Havisham, an elderly woman who is preoccupied, obsessed with her being jilted at the altar, and she lives in this decrepit house and wears her wedding gown. And it's uh, rather unpleasant and eerie. The Picture of Dorian Gray by Oscar Wilde. This is an excellent allegory of selfishness and vanity about a man who um, basically sells his soul to live forever young. Uh, and then the last one I'll mention here, a little less gothic in some ways than the others, but still has a lot of the same elements. So I'll just mention it. The Hound of the Baskervilles, the most famous 
Sherlock Holmes story. And uh, again, late Victorian. Most of these are late Victorian. I would say Jane Eyre is probably one of the earlier ones and possibly Great Expectations, although I'm not quite sure. So this is sort of the landscape of Victorian Gothic literature. There's more that I haven't mentioned, obviously. Uh, but you'll see there's a mix of female authors, um, different... Well, most of these are British now that I see it. And we are talking about Victorian specifically. Um, it could be argued that books like Dostoevsky's The Idiot would also come under a Victorian Gothic. But I do think there is something... Um, distinctly British about this type of book, uh, with the exception, of course, of The Phantom of the Opera. And um, perhaps we'll return to that later in the video, but anyway, uh, this was the list I was able to come up with. Um, so, what are some common themes of Victorian Gothics? One of the things that, of course, is prevalent throughout these... Oh, I forgot to mention Dracula. How can we forget Dracula? By Bram Stoker. <laughs> That's embarrassing. Okay, so themes. Uh, of course, good versus evil. I will also specify, I think a good gothic novel is good versus evil disguised as good. And you'll see that a lot in these books. So in Jane Eyre, uh, the the character, Mr. Rochester, is an anti-hero. So he ends up being the antagonist in the book because of his past sins. And yet initially he appears to be a, a good figure in her life, a friend and protector. And so when that gets turned on its head, then then things really fall apart for her. Uh, Phantom of the Opera, the same thing. You've got Eric the ghost pretending to be the angel of music, a benevolent figure. He turns out to be a very non-benevolent figure. The woman in white, again, the antagonist, is the fiancé of the young woman named Laura. He turns out to be, you know, no good at all. Um, great expectations. Miss Havisham, the benefactress, right? Who is also a rather nefarious influence on the young man, Pip. And the list goes on. Uh, perhaps Dracula is the primary exception here. I don't think Dracula ever appears to be good. Um, especially in the book, you know, in, in popular adaptations, he does appear to be very, you know, handsome and attractive and stuff, but in the book, not so much. So, uh, yeah, that, that's a major theme. Um, of course, you need to have a haunted place, and it doesn't have to be haunted, literally, but all of these tend to center around places, houses, that become characters in the story. So we've got Dracula's castle. We've got Eric's lair under the opera house. Um, of course, Thornfield, the house that Jane Eyre falls in love with, but also holds a sinister secret. Uh, the moor in The Hound of the Baskervilles. So you definitely need a place or a house or something that helps embody this mood. And again, there's exceptions. Uh, Dorian Gray doesn't really have that. Although you could argue that the attic kind of fulfills that that role in the story. But yeah, it's common. It's a common element. Uh, supernatural events and foreboding. It's kind of a no-brainer. And self-explanatory. Okay, here's one that I think is really big and is a little more understated. So, history as an antagonist. 
Now, what do I mean by that? So, in Dracula, Dracula is an ancient vampire who is undead. He doesn't die and has lived for centuries. Um, so, this idea that history comes back to haunt you, very prevalent in Dracula. The Baskerville curse is the same way in the Sherlock Holmes story. An ancestor did some evil deeds which results in a curse on the family. Uh, so that's that plays a big part. Of course, in The Phantom of the Opera, you've got the Angel of Music myth, which Christine's father instills in her. And not maliciously, but it is something in her past that comes back to haunt her. In general, a legacy of ancestors or deceased or distant parents leading to uh, isolation in Jane Eyre. And in general, contributes to unhealthy relationships in, in the romantic books. Um, what else? So, unconventional heroes. Uh, Sherlock Holmes is an obvious example, but I wanted to focus more on uh, Mina from Dracula. She's the wife of the protagonist, Jonathan. Very intelligent, very smart, and hardworking. Marion Halcombe in The Woman in White, who goes to great lengths to try to save her sister from the evil fiancé. And then, of course, Jane Eyre, who is incredibly intelligent and upright and has a very strong sense of personal dignity and agency. Really great, unconventional heroines. Another theme which comes up in several of these books is technology and reason. Oh dear, I can't spell. Technology and reason as forces of good. This is particularly a big deal in Dracula because you've got the shorthand method of writing, you've got the typewriter, you've got blood transfusions. Uh, Bram Stoker pulls out the stops to show how they use technology to defeat the legendary supernatural powers of Dracula. Very interesting that he chose to to go that direction. Oops. Um, of course, he also uses uh, religious powers as well, at least uh, symbolic religious powers with the uh, stakes and the garlic and so on. Um, but but technology plays a big role in Dracula. Uh, Jane's ability to think for herself. Again, going back to the reason and analyzing situations. And not just being a damsel in distress. Uh, and of course, famously Sherlock Holmes and his art of deduction. Or as he would say, the science of deduction. His way of figuring things out in a very logical, rational way. Um, character types. So I'll just go into this kind of briefly. I think it's mostly self-explanatory. The character types tend to fall under typical Victorian character types. So you've got the angel girl, I'm calling her. I'm running out of room to write. Uh, you've got the angel girl. So, you know, angelic, innocent woman. And that, that would be Christine Daae from The Phantom of the Opera. That would be Sybil Vane from Dorian Gray and uh, the young girl Laura in The Woman in White. A naive, innocent, taken advantage of. A uh, tortured hero, Mr. Rochester from Jane Eyre, certainly. 
Uh, Dorian Gray, the tortured hero, self-tortured, you might say. Heathcliff from Wuthering Heights. This is very much key to the gothic novel. Another one I'll throw in there, and you can, you know, debate with me whether you agree. I would say there's usually some kind of twisted parent figure. And I say twisted because it's often blends in with the romantic interest. So that would be, you know, um, Eric from The Phantom of the Opera. Uh, Count Fosco from The Woman in White has kind of that dynamic going on. And even Miss Havisham in Great Expectations is a sort of a twisted mother figure. And then the last one I'll just throw in is, I'll call him the Oracle. Somebody wise who guides the main character at some point in their life. So Van Helsing, really good example of that. He's the uh, the Dutch vampire hunter in Dracula who guides the protagonists on their quest to defeat uh, the vampire. Um, there's the Persian. I think he's just called the Persian in The Phantom of the Opera who kind of reveals knowledge to Raoul and other characters. And then, kind of in a weird way, I would include St. John from Jane Eyre in this list. St. John is the missionary preacher who proposes to Jane at the end of the book. Um, so, I don't know if he really comes under the category of Oracle, but it does strike me that having that conversation with St. John, Jane Eyre comes to realizations about about what love is and what she expects in a relationship. So he kind of is an accidental oracle. So I don't know if I'm missing anything here. These are the things that occurred to me um, as I think about my own gothic Victorian novel that I wrote. Um, I would say that I used most of these. I had this theme, good versus evil disguised as good. Um, I had the haunted place. It was just a stereotypical Victorian mansion. I was trying to be tropey on purpose, so that, that's my excuse. Supernatural events, mm, sort of. Didn't really go very supernatural. Uh, history as an antagonist, so my protagonist, the female character, had a rather uh, tragic backstory. And also to do with her father. So kind of hit those themes there. Um, technology, sort of. So one of the characters in my book ended up being not exactly techno technologically savvy, but kind of representing that in an indirect way. Uh, but I did, didn't did quite um, fit into all of these boxes and... I don't know. I, I did have a tortured hero, but he wasn't the hero. He was just another character. So yeah, it's it's fun to read these books and see the commonalities. Although honestly, they're each very unique. I would say though, my favorites out of this list are probably Dracula, Jane Eyre, and the woman in white, and the picture of Dorian Gray. So that's all I had for this episode. Let me know if you've read any of these, if you have any thoughts on you know, what makes a Victorian gothic novel, uh, what your favorites are, and uh, anything else you'd like to share. Please like the video if you enjoyed it, and thanks for watching.